Hey guys, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics. I'm super excited today because the FedEx guy just showed up and as you can see down here, he has brought me my new Tronxy 3D printer uh, do-it-yourself assembly kit. It actually showed up five days early, so today we're gonna do an unboxing and a build video. Hope you enjoy it. Let's take this downstairs and get it set up. So here we are. I have the printer down here on my workbench and we're going to take a couple quick measurements of the box and then open it up and get it put together. So 18 inches by 8 inches by 16 and a half. Weighs probably in the 20 pound range. I think that's about right. Looks like it came from China, and actually, like I said before, it uh, came about five days early, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Well, let's get to the good stuff. Let's crack her open and see what we have. Here we go. Alright, first thing I see, got some foam padding here, and that exposes the printer parts. So here's the top view of the box, looks like we have the acrylic pieces all set up here, some electronics, uh, the some mounts, and it looks like we have a few tools. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. and. All right, and our next layer looks like we have the heat bed, some Z supports, a lot of wiring, and some cabling. Let's remove this part. Have oh, that looks like the the motor driver board might be with that chip. There might be actually the uh, the main controller as well. Yep, it looks like the board has integrated motor drivers. Um, I can see that it has little potentiometers in them. If we put this down here. You can see these are adjustable even though they aren't replaceable. So if this board failed, then you'd have to buy the whole new board again. And some micro switches and some programming cables. Go ahead and move this out of here. Got one more layer, and what do we have? We have some stepper motors here. Uh, looks like our extruder. That looks fun. And of course our rods, and here it came with a roll of filament. Quick note on this, uh, it is black PLA 1.75 millimeter and 0.25 kilograms. I'm not sure what's in this box here so we're gonna take that out in just a second. I think I'm going to put this back here so I can move the camera angle again. Well here is everything all laid out in the original packaging anyway and we'll put all this on the table in just a second. So you get three layers of all of the parts all nicely packed and it as you can see this foam is actually uh, real thick so it secures everything quite nicely. I am actually pretty impressed with it so far. All right well everything is all laid out on the table and I've got about a hundred parts here so definitely a lot to go from. I think the first thing I'm going to do is check out what's on this SD card and hopefully there are some handy instructions on there. If not, I'll have to dive on the old interwebs and find them for myself. 
Before I get started on the build though, there's just a couple of issues that I wanted to cover. I did some research on this printer and I found uh, two big problems that seem to happen rather frequently, so I'm going to try to bypass them today. First problem is the Z-axis rod mounts are sometimes uh, bent or warped to the point that it jams up on the Z-axis. I've taken a look at these and they actually look quite good. I was ready to reprint them and I have files for them if I need to do so, but I think I'm going to give those a try. They actually look really nice. Also, I have printed out some Z-axis stabilizers for the top of the printer, which should hold it a little more sturdy. I'm going to implement those as I go. And the other issue was with the power supply. Um, I've heard that this particular power supply can get overloaded by this printer. And in one case I saw on YouTube, it actually shorted out the breakers in his house. The fix to that would be to uh, use a power MOSFET, which I have purchased and received already. That came about two days ago. And I'll leave the link in the description below if you wanted to use these as well. I'm going to use this between the power supply and the heat bed so that the power supply doesn't overload. And I've also printed out a mount for that that I can just connect to the printer. And I also have some wiring for the MOSFET as well. So let's take a look at this SD card here and see if there's any instructions on it. We'll get to the build. I think this is going to take about three hours. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse it. You guys can check out some great music I've added, uh, sponsored by my friend Luke at LJ Beats. Hope you enjoy it. Link to his channel is in the description below.
All right, so our build is pretty much complete. The whole thing took me about four hours. I ran into a couple of problems with the instructions, which I'll cover here in a second with my build notes. Um, a couple of things that I think are important that I should share with you during my build. I made a couple of adjustments. So the first quick one was with the X and Y carriage. It tells you to insert this vertically and then tie it off with a zip tie. I decided to slightly modify that by doubling this over. The belt is actually steel belted and it will grip itself really well. So then I just zip tied it twice with these to secure the loop there. Uh, it has these little metal barbs sticking out of it, which are very sharp. So be careful of that. It's hard to cut as well unless you have really sharp scissors. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll stick you. Um, also, with the heat bed here, it tells you to run a bolt directly through there, through the spring, and then end it with the wing nut. Well, I decided to add... Uh, a nut at the bottom of the heat bed to secure the bolt better. In my CTC printer build, it actually uh, helped quite a bit because when you try to tighten the wing nut too much, it'll actually rotate the screw in there. And if you have a sheet on top of it, like a PEI sheet or a captain tape, then you'll actually have to punch through that material to, to use a screwdriver on your, on your screw. Between instructions 17, and 18. It assumes that you've already got the X carriage motor installed and fitted on there and, uh, and that just isn't in the instructions at all. I spent a considerable amount of time, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, trying to look for that and it, it just wasn't there. So I ended up just putting it together myself and hoping for the best and it wasn't that hard it's just they they missed that and left that out um the important thing was though the actual stepper orientation because the wires will only come out in a certain spot and they uh they don't really tell you which direction to face them. also it is definitely a uh english translation of chinese instructions so the wording is a little um a little strange there, but if you're used to reading the instructions in that type of format, then I, I guess it's not such a big problem. Um, also, the power supply. So, in the instructions, they tell you to mount this uh, opposite of how I have it mounted here with the terminals facing down. Well, I spent about 10 minutes trying to get this uh, mounted so the terminal strip was facing down, which is how I wanted it. But it's just not going to work with the holes that I have here. They basically force you to to mount it upward like this. Also, this is a power supply that's compatible with the, the US and the uh, UK. And it was actually set on 220 volts. So I had to flip this switch right here. It's inside of this hole to 110. So if you get a printer like this, you're definitely going to want to check the orientation of that switch to make sure it's compatible with your power supply or with your, your line voltage. Now let's talk about the end stops just for a second. This is the model P802MA. It has bed leveling, which is this red piece right here. Well, that's great. However, it actually does not have a ZN stop. So this is the ZN stop. It'll go up indefinitely until it crashes into here, unless it's limited by software. And unless your Z is calibrated right, it'll crash into the bed. So you have to make sure that this is adjusted just right. The other thing is the X carriage stop and I don't know if you can see it but you can probably hear it right there moving um, this is the only possible place for it to mount I couldn't find a spot over here which would have worked but it has to mount here and why that's a concern for me is if you can see uh, there's the wiring here is right up against the Z thread rod um, and I mean touching the Z thread rod and I feel like over time this 
Z-Rod might actually grind through the wiring and create a short. I haven't been able to change that, and I, I really don't like that it's there, but I'm going to run it and test it for a while and see if that's going to be a long-term problem, and perhaps I can come up with a solution. The only other thing that I had a concern with is the uh, actual wiring harness strategy which there is none for this the when you get done the wires are all over the place and you have to figure out for yourself how to cable everything up this part wasn't so bad uh you just wrap that up with the cable provided and then the heat bed if i can get a good shot here uh just wire that up but then i have wires going through the bottom of it and then of course off to the side and this is quite a mess so i i spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how i was going to harness up all of those wires i have a strategy in place right now that it seems to seems to allow for complete mo motion of the printer and i'm going to go with that until i come up with something better one other thing i forgot to mention is that uh, this is lacking one critical safety feature, which is actually the on-off switch. So that is going to be remedied very soon, but if you're testing a printer like this for the first time, you're definitely going to want a power strip or something that you can manually disconnect the power because otherwise the only alternative is to just yank the plug out. So I have this handy here, and if something trips, then it'll trip through this instead. So we're gonna use this for testing for now and implement a power switch a little bit later. But the printer is completely built right now and I think we are ready for the first test. So let's get to it. I'm actually gonna be doing a separate video for all of the testing on this printer. So thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and if you think this video sucked and I should stop reviewing printers, give me a thumbs down. Either way, please let me know in the comments below so I know what you guys want to see out of my channel. Also, please check out my Patreon campaign. Donations from the Patreon campaign help me fund my main project, the Genesis Robotic Platform, which you'll definitely be seeing more of in my channel soon. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all for now.